So four matches down, one match left, because it's time for your main event. Ahem. <laughs> Whoa. 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 What's this? Whoa. Whoa. What's going on? Oh, what's Whoa. happening? <clears throat> oh, I see. Yeah. You look like you have something to say. Do you? Yes, I certainly do. I, I was inspired by this pay-per-view to write an opinion piece, a.k.a. a list. Because who doesn't love a list? You know, hashtag clickbait. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so here we go. This is my top 10 most overplayed moments in wrestling history. I'm going to preface it by saying the following. These are the moments I'm completely sick of seeing. Most are iconic for good reason, but I don't want to eat fillet steak seven nights a week. Right? These are specific moments rather than recurring ones. So I've used as an example, there's no inclusion of RKO's, 619's or Tombstone pile drivers, all of which I never want to see again. Okay, But they're not on the list. They are not on the list because these are specific moments in time. Okay, I never want to see any of these again, other than the the irony is not lost to me, other than when you hopefully do a nice few splices (laughs) for this. Um, That's the icing on the cake, getting me to do more work. (laughs) No, no, this is, I mean, well, Steve can do this. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So these are not necessarily moments overplayed just by WWE but in general on any wrestling-related platform, including OSW. Okay. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Take (laughs) take that, Jay. (laughs) (laughs) Tell me no more king in a row. I'm out of here. Um, I I have to give a shout-out to two of my buddies that are currently not in this room. Yeah, I know. They threw out a few suggestions, some of which were viable. And One of the made buddies the list. Have my hard drive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've actually met them, Paul and Taller. Couple of beardy headers that have good wrestling knowledge and watch our show. Right, so let's start. Okay, number 10. And this is controversial, and you may cut all of this out because it's going to be unpopular. Number 10. Batista's thumbs down in the build up to WrestleMania 21. I do have a, a good reason for this. This guy has gotten a free ride in his career. He can't wrestle, he can't talk, he's got a great look and a great entrance. Minus his machine gun taking a dump thing. (laughs) Because Cena was pushed slightly more than Batista, because he's more talented in every way, Batista got a pass. There are other moments on this list I've seen more, but few which have had such a negative long-term impact on my enjoyment of wrestling. How come? Because I hate Batista. (laughs) Okay. I just want to say, I thought that was a great moment. I know. I, yeah. I, and and it it's clever and it's well booked, but it's Batista. Mm, okay. And I don't feel he ever should have been anywhere near the spot he was in. And this was probably the moment that made him. I do agree with you, except for right before he left when he turned into Douchebag oh, Dave. Douchebag Dave. With the upturned collar. That was great. But the rest of it, absolutely agree. Leather waistcoat. No, he can fuck off. Okay. <laughs> what about Blue Tista? That was pretty great. It was great. <laughs> but he fucked off straight afterwards. Though. Yeah. yeah. And please, I'd love your opinion on if I'm right or wrong. In this case, you don't think it's overplayed. Okay. Like, I know. I was annoyed he got a free ride. Only Cena got heat, but he was having worse matches. Hmm. But no one ever gave out to him because he wasn't the number one guy in the company. He was the SmackDown guy. Yeah, he got away with it. I think this, like, this segment for me gets a free ride, not because of Dave, but because for me, it's the last great long-term WrestleMania build. That's true. Uh, it was built on the back of Orton's failed build. Yeah. Yeah. And Dave took it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's probably the least obvious one. Okay. 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 Number nine. Taker going back to his home planet at Royal Rumble 94. <laughs> 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 there might be an element of recency bias in this, but I'm happy that I've seen it enough times now. I love it, but I'm going to put it to bed now. Time right? to fuck off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I have to go now. My planet needs me. Number eight. The third man at Bash of the Beach 96. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. I'd have that higher. (laughs) But whose side is he on? Yeah, there you go. One of the most important moments in wrestling history, but I've probably seen it 50 times. Okay. Let's get a monster! Yeah, but whose side is he on? What are you talking about? Whose side is he on? What are you talking about? Number seven. The WWE CW zombie. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking serious. So <laughs> that was left. <laughs> yeah. 
So this whole segment was basically taking the piss out of the original ECW. It was like, this is what we think of your company, a fucking zombie walking out on the first show of our new ECW. It was... Oh, that one was sci-fi. Um, they wanted an alien character, and I said, we can't have an alien character. It would be terrible. And they compromised with a zombie. Okay. But then they did get the alien yeah. character about a week or two later. <laughs> to hang around Vince, and he yeah. got shunned off. Yeah. So you're saying this was sci-fi, saying it has to be a scary character coming out. Yeah, it has to be a ghouly ghouly. Okay, you know, ghoulie, so ghoulie. WWE did not want this. Oh, yeah, no, no. Okay, they wanted something stupid. So the point kind of holds by a thread. So it's not just that I don't like the segment, but it's the fact that it keeps getting brought up by reviewers and anyone talking about wrestling, <laughs> including us, keeps talking about this segment. And that's what I, why I'm really sick of it. If I saw it once, I'd just get over it. Number six. The botched shooting star press at WrestleMania 19 by Brock Lesnar. Okay. Incredible moment. And a real shame that Angle wasn't positioned just a few inches closer to where the turnbuckle that Brock was jumping off. Amazing, incredible, and blown away by it. Just I've just seen it too many times. Okay. Yeah. Any agreement, disagreement on that? I don't really remember seeing it, them replaying it, because it's not it's a botched spot, so they don't really play it. Maybe I've seen it on other things then, okay. like, you know. Maybe some listicles. Maybe it could have been. Yeah. Could have been. You'll have it on the like the mania of WrestleMania and don't put maybe the first half of the <laughs> stupid <laughs> yeah, star no, just the pre-botch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know, lots of countdown shows and things like yeah, that. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Number five. HBK Pratt falling at SummerSlam 05. And this is the really controversial one. So hilarious at the time, but I looked it up, he was 40 years old. 40 years old, and he's doing he's behaving like a child. And I don't know what Hogan, what age is Hogan? Mid- 17, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was completely inappropriate. And every wrestling fan scoffs at the billionaire Ted skits from 10 years previous. HBK did the exact same kind of skit in the build up to this match, like the Larry King thing where he came on and he dressed like Hogan. And I don't understand why, why it's funny because HBK does it, but not because some random actor did it a few years previously. I think most hardcore fans hate Hogan and so the fact that Sean was he's shooting on him I, th- I think that's why it gets a pass plus Sean is tremendously charismatic one of the greatest wrestlers of all time so when he does something it's funnier it's like if a line by Mr. Burns is funny because Mr. Burns is funny hmm. but if Matthew said the same line stone dead <laughs> <laughs> so you're telling me that HBK is more talented than the guy who played Hogan in the billionaire Ted skits by his na- a nat twing <laughs> Well, on camera, brother, I'm a great guy. But when that camera goes off, brother, oh, it's a different story, brother. Oh, brother, brother, brother. Number four. The curtain call. So this is only grainy footage, like a handheld camera yeah, at, yeah. at MSG. So the click celebrating together, breaking kayfabe. Yeah. Heels and faces, the, cats and dogs. Yeah, cats and dogs and... The whole Mass world hysteria. comes crashing in. I've seen it a lot, but it's because it always inspires then an explanation that goes on for usually 10 to 15 minutes as to what was happening here, what happened in the build-up, what happened afterwards, the Monday Night Wars, da 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 It just goes on and on. And it was fascinating to me when I hadn't heard the story before, and whenever it was, I first heard about it 15 years ago, and I thought it was fascinating. No more. All that stuff, it was that night, the curtain call. That was the attitude. That was the beginning of the attitude. Number three. Shane's appearance on the final Nitro. Yeah, Split screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, the just that cast, image, yeah. I can't even look at it. See, this is something that's being played to death by like wrestling YouTube shows, countdown shows, top tens, but also on WWE. Yeah, because they're proud of it. Well, they, the they, day they kill their competition yeah, yeah. and then themselves. Slowly. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're <laughs> not the second bit. The contract reads Shane McMahon. Number two. Montreal. Oh, my God. Oh, how's that a number one? Oh, my ah. God. Oh, my yeah. God. You know why we don't do the attitude, Eric? I fucking don't want to talk about Montreal. <laughs> yeah. So, enough said. I'm yeah. done with it. Yeah. Ab- absolutely. I'm shocked this is not num- number WWE one. WWE and TNA wouldn't stop doing the finish and like, oh, this is Montreal. Tap, tap, tap. Yeah. Oh, yeah. what about Montreal? Tap, yeah. tap, tap. Oh, fuck. Okay. Everything. And it's it's not just the finish and, the, and Hebner signaling for the bell. It's the spit afterwards. I've seen that. Probably 200 times. Easily. Yep. They screwed me. They 
really screwed me, the lousy bastards. Number one. No, some honorable mentions. Honorable mentions. Honorable mentions. Okay, Triple H is barely on this list. So and I, I, I thought that would be rude to exclude this particular person. Just two words: prude. bicycle shorts. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've just put him in for two things. One is his O2 return before the Rumble. Oh well, yeah, it was. December. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, was it December? Did a build up for the Rumble? Okay, yeah. late O1. It's when he return. did the running choke. Do you remember anything? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and the the he had the leather. He ruined two perfectly good jackets. <laughs> On his, on his way to the, the ring. Leather, yeah. yeah, yeah. And he had a 15 minute entrance, maybe 20 minute entrance, whatever that was. <laughs> it doesn't annoy me that much, but he needs to be on this list. And then the other one is DX showing up at Nitro. And the reason this annoys me so much is the biggest missed opportunity, I think, in wrestling history. Open the doors and let them in. <laughs> yeah. Open yeah, the fucking shine door. Out of yes. The <laughs> what is the worst that can happen? The worst that can happen, they go in and everyone changes the channel to Nitro. Yeah. Yeah. Or much more likely what happen is they get scared and back off and then and they look like dicks. <laughs> Scott Steiner <laughs> comes out to them and they run yeah. They just <laughs> peg it. Yeah. And the rest of the lads leave, leaving little bitch there by himself. <laughs> Book up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Steve, this one. How, however, it did many years later go on to give us here come bottom. <laughs> La Vic. Wednesday at the Alamo at high noon. Hick and bottom. See you at the Alamo. So it was worth it then. So I'll take it. Okay. And that they retcon it saying that it's a tank where it's a fucking you know a, it's a Jeep. Yeah, with a bin on top. <laughs> Is it a hot bin? <laughs> Whether it was driving a tank to the door of WCW and number one no 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 more honorable, honorable mentions, mentions. Uh, very quickly um, meme wrestling mo- meme worthy moments I don't find memes funny so if there's a meme if a, something has happened that a meme comes out of I instantly dislike it because I don't want memes I don't like them and I don't wanna, <laughs> I don't understand them just age 20 years there I don't get them I don't maybe I'm stupid but I was tempted to add Shockmaster I still get something out of it though there's so many layers to the moment that I can still watch it. The Bulldog angry, makes it. The angry vigor of a 104-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> Another one, the reveal of Vince as a higher power. It's not funny. It never was. Ooh, controversial one. Art O'Dono. Ooh. So you kind of know. I, I, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's very famous. Yeah. yeah, it was done perfectly by Matthew in Botchamania all those years ago. I had never heard of it or seen it before. And he did it absolutely perfectly. It didn't need to be done again. Still love your impression, though, Steve. <laughs> okay. He looks like a businessman. Oh, how how much does that guy weigh? How much does this fellow weigh? How much does he weigh? Oh. How much does he weigh? How much does he weigh? The talk. And no, <laughs> uh, I was waiting. <laughs> um, so now, when I hear uh, how much does this guy weigh, it's very much like. The expression that Alan Partridge has getting into the lift of the guy who keeps laughing <laughs> with, you know, he's wearing the castrol jacket. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. me when I hear how much of this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. This so. country. <laughs> this country. <laughs> and number one. HPK kind of skins the cat or while Rumble 95. Oh, fuck you, Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't, you couldn't count, this is not fully skinning the cat, is it? He needs to, does he need to flip back up to the Yeah, top? yeah. Okay, so half He's skim, the cat. skimming the cat. <laughs> <laughs> um, the spot that spawned a thousand Battle Royal false eliminations. Yeah. Year after year, WWE wheeled this spot out to marvel at. Like, oh my, I can't believe this is incredible. It was a clever idea, executed mediocrely, with the silly flailing legs of Sean, the camera l- lingering on him, hanging from the ropes, and Bulldog's music not hitting quickly enough, making it obvious that something wasn't on the level. Also, even at the time, I thought it made Bulldog look like a fool, and I don't know if he ever recovered from that. Wait, he recovered from the Timothy hair. (laughs) (laughs) He recovered from the braids from Spain. He got a pair of jeans. Yeah, Yeah, Uh, which he didn't recover from. (laughs) Which he then rolled up to, like, his shins. Yeah. (laughs) Was he going waiting? (laughs) 
There you go. That is my OOC SOP. SOP? Uh, subjective opinion piece. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is OOC's top 10 most overplayed moments in wrestling history. All right. I very much enjoyed that, Steve. Yes, very much Thank so. you. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, well done. OOC's top 10 subjective moments in history. <laughs> Subjective moments in history. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, great, man. I really enjoyed that. Well done, well done. Hey, hey.